Good morning and welcome back to our midweek edition of GMNC. We have a great hour-long lineup just for you. So grab a coffee and enjoy the show with us. Thank you to the beautiful Amontan and the Hair Shack. Just, they didn't do my hair, but they do all the other presenters here and always doing a great job. And Puza Water as our morning show sponsors. We appreciate all all that you are doing for us and making our show great. Let's kick it off with the weather and surf report. It's time for your weather and as usual brought to you by Victory Surf. Today will be nice with plenty of sunshine with a high of 24, a low of 12 and the real feel 24 degrees and the real field shade 22. We have a north north easterly wind at 11 kilometers per hour and wind gusts at 24. So if you're wearing a wick, hold on to it. Sunrise at 6 45 a.m. and sunset at 5 03 p.m. Typical winter day in Belito. We also have 0% of showers, uh, which is absolutely fantastic. If you're in Joburg, plenty of sunshine with a high of 20 and a very cold unpleasant 3 as the low. Pretoria pleasant with full of day and sunshine with a high of 21 and a low of 6 degrees. In Cape Town pleasantly warm with a 25 of, at the high and a low of 13 degrees. The magic of an At Austria Accounting, we are more than chocolate counters. At Austria Accounting, we specialize in accounting. Taxation. Company secretarial services. Business advisory services, accounting cloud software. Full payroll administration to ensure full compliance. And we service our clients in English, Afrikaans, and Isuzu. Don't get caught with your hand in the chocolate jar when we can be your greatest asset. Hi, my name is Bobby van Jarsveld, singer, songwriter, and actor. And I'm excited to tell you that I've partnered with filmmaker Mornay Lane and that I'm proud to be a part of the Da Vinci International Film Academy. I'm Monet Lane, and for the past 15 years, I've been on an amazing film industry journey that has included me producing 10 films and director too. My movies landed up on Netflix, Showmax, and DSTV. My passion for filmmaking and teaching is the very reason why I started Da Vinci International Film Academy. Our exciting user-friendly app has all the elements to teach you the A to Z's of filmmaking and to top it all off, we will even shoot a short film with you as part of your practical. Hello, my name is Mandy Ruthman, a passionate and experienced marketer and I'm looking forward to bringing you our new course, Real Marketing Insights, into the film industry that will teach students practical and effective marketing skills, not only for your business, but for yourself. I'm Lynette Pretorius, the owner and professional accountant from Austral Accounting. Now that you have the skills of filmmaking and know how to market yourself and your business, I will teach you how to start and manage your business finances with our new business entrepreneurial course. Hi, I'm Darets. I'm a professional makeup artist and I'll be teaching you how to do film and special effects makeup. Our course pricing ranges from $439.50 to $879 per course with no registration fee being charged. And best of all, we'll shoot a short film with you in your province at the end of the year. A new feature on our app is our short course offering. 
allowing students to only select the courses they want to do or even just our signature course, DaVinci Resolve. The choice is yours. We are accredited by Blackmagic Design and students will earn an international certification with every exam passed. And every student that joins DaVinci International Film Academy will get a free subscription for Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Teams. It is as easy as pay, learn and become certified. Join today by downloading our app and press the enroll button. Black Magic Design, creating the world's highest quality solutions for feature film, post-production and television broadcast industries. We're on the couch this morning with Tony talking daily inspiration. Welcome, Tony. It's lovely to have you again. Yes, Lindy. Thank you. And uh, welcome to you as well. Good thank to see you. a new face on set. <laughs> lovely. <laughs> Yeah, I want to talk about unlearning. Okay. It's a, it's a very unusual topic and it's not something that we're so accustomed to. Yes. You know, throughout life we've been told on, on numerous occasions you've got to learn your stuff and know your stuff and that's what we become, just regurgitated. Yes. Yeah. You know, we, we pick up the information, we learn it for an examination, we cough it out in the yeah. papers, exam papers and that's it, you know. But how much of that information we've actually stored mm -hmm. and it's just accumulating dust? And sure. where's the space for new stuff? That's one of the problems we have. The other challenge we have in life is that we're constantly learning throughout the years of tertiary education and primary education, interacting with our religious leaders, yes. interacting with political uh, organizations and social. All of this is uh, giving us information. So all the time that we're awake, we're actually accumulating information. The idea or the trend these days is not to learn, but to unlearn. Okay. Right. And that is what the focus I want to just share with the viewers this, this morning. Okay. Is to get into the mode of understanding what this unlearning is all about. Now, a simple illustration is if you take a cupboard that you've stand for storage. Sure. And you've had all your stuff in there, you know, your hard drives and all those yeah. discs that we had for years and all yes. that. Yes. And you're looking for something that you know is some way there. You've got to pull all the stuff exactly. out before you get there. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So the p idea is, or the thought behind it is that do we need all of this stuff? And we've got to search very, very carefully. We've got to look carefully into our daily living and understand that we don't need all of this stuff all the time. Okay. What has happened, Lindy, is also based on other people's opinions, other people's views, other people's perspe yes. uh, perspective of things, we've formed our own foundation. Sure. But the, the true question okay. is, is that our foundation or is it based on someone else's opinion? So today I want to encourage the viewers to start building on their own foundation. Okay. Right? And one of the ways of actually yes. doing it is to make a concerted and committed decision to take stock. Okay. Right? Take all stock right. of the stuff you've had. Do a bit of uh, a cluttering, decluttering. Decluttering all your the mind. Time. Yeah. Mind decluttering. Okay. So it is more about unlearning. And how sure. do we go about doing that is to develop an open mind. Okay. Right. Yes. When we're sitting around the table and having a meal or when we're sitting around with people and having a meeting, be bold enough and strong enough to view your, con your views, to yes. bring it out and say, listen, I, I disagree. This is what I want to bring to the table mm -hmm. and make it known that you bring it out because you fervently believe that yeah. that is what you understand and you think it's a strong point. Very often we just they say, go with the flow. And I say, why go with the flow? <laughs> Yeah. You, know, you, you need to stop somewhere and be rescued from the flow that's <laughs> taking you down into nowhere. Sure. So that's very important to understand that you can actually stop the process of just learning and, de and, sure. and develop the process of unlearning while you're going through all of this. Yeah. So the idea is to learn, unlearn, learn, unlearn. Constantly learning yes. and unlearning. Yes, it's a constant mm -hmm. process. There's never an end to that. We are give credit to all the university professors and our school teachers yeah. and all the people we've interacted with. Yes. They've actually helped us to grow to who we are. But yes. are we really who we are? So how does a person know when is the right time to unlearn? The I right time know. is yeah. right now. Okay. Right? You've got to start now. You know, okay. you're a teenager, you've accumulated so much of information. Yes. By the time you get to an adult, you're already accumulating more. And we're doing that every day. Yeah. So the idea is to do it right now. 
When a baby is born, up until the age of seven, six to seven years, there's no conscious mind that part develops. It's only the subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. And that's happened to all of us. So mm -hmm. by the age of seven, we've accumulated so much of stuff already. Mm -hmm. And that is also not serving a purpose. Okay. Right? So yeah. we now need to do a lot of decluttering and understand that that's sure. it's possible by making a decision that you want to become open-minded and open ears about what is people saying to you and what are you able to offer in return. Okay. Right? And the other idea is to share that with people. Sure. Let yes. you become the building blocks of someone else's future. Right? Because you've developed an open mind and mm. you've developed this open way of looking at things very differently. Mm. And it also helps you to change your perspective of things. Correct. You know, when you change the way you see things, things start to change. Definitely, definitely. You know, yeah. and that's important. We can't just continue going with the flow yeah. and thinking that all of that we've we're ending up with migraines more yeah. than we ever bargained <laughs> for. <laughs> I mean, to someone who's inundated with information, yeah. we, we live in a society that's inundated with social yes. media. Yes. It, everything is yes. just in our face yes. every day. Yeah. You never get the time to switch off. Yeah. How do you declutter? How, what is, how, how do you even get to saying? Saying, by just saying we don't get time to declutter yeah. is already a problem. Okay. We've got to make that time. Sure. Right? And, I, and I'm glad that you asked this question because what I have is I have a premium hour. So I get up one hour earlier than yes. normal. Yes. Right? So if I'm starting my day at 6.30, okay. I get up at 5.30. Yeah. And I call it a premium hour. Robin Sharma talks about yes. it as well too. And in that hour, you start preparing yourself for you, who you want to be. You know, for those who do the prayer, you're welcome to do. Right. So you do, yeah. do a bit of exercise, you do yeah. reading, you do your meditation, you do your self-focus, uh, uh, self yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. And you start to understand that this is something that's not really adding value to my True. life today. Yes. And I'm going to need to look at And you start looking at how you're going to let go of these things. Okay. You know, holding on to all of these things that we've learned is not serving a purpose every day. Yeah. So the yeah. more often we make that time. Yes. Lindy, the question is, if we don't make the time, we're going to end up in hospital. Yeah, true. Then we're going to have to have to make the time. Then you need to make time right? before Because to. you don't want to be there. <laughs> so even then, to start yeah. now. Start to do the decluttering right now. Start okay. to unlearn right now. And eventually, you're going to start, you will obviously leave, lead a life that is so flourishing, so okay. colorful, and so abundant. Yes. And you obviously will, will impact that kind of lifestyle on your children and people mm -hmm. that are going to be connecting with you as well. That's beautiful. So my... Yeah. T my, my topic or my, my message for today is learn, unlearn, learn, unlearn. Constantly. Don't forget to bring the unlearning part into the process Perfect. as well. And yeah. share it with others. Share yeah. it with others. Let everyone else become open-minded about it. And the thing about with COVID, lastly, I want to yes. say, we went yeah. into lockdown. Yes. And yeah. we've been locked down <laughs> with all the clutter. Yes. Time to True. release. Time to time release. To release. <laughs> Permission granted. Time to release. <laughs> Definitely. We are releasing yes. and, and learning a lot yeah. of things that we've picked up on the way. I love what you just shared with our viewers. It's, it really speaks to self-love yes. and taking care of Absolutely. yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I like that self-love. Thank you so much, Thank Tony. You that so was much really inspirational. Me. Great. After the break, we're chatting to Neville from Glonlo Reptile Park. Water paint. You like queuing to pay electricity? <laughs> Don't think so. Water paint. Wait, so I can use it? Even if I'm on another network. Water paint. Off to do the monthly shopping. <laughs> it's done. Really? Yeah, well, Coco. And we get rewards. We like sending and receiving money now, now. How about when the combos communicate? Voter pay. Yes. Introducing Vodapay, the one app for anything and everything. Like it, Vodapay it.
welcome back to BTV. And one of my favorite people is on the couch, Neville from the Reptile Park. Um, Neville, welcome. It's the first time I'm on the show. Yep. Uh, we know each other for so long, and uh, this morning they've thrown me into the hot water. So I'm going to enjoy talking to you. I'm very skeptic about that bag next to you. Oh, we're going to uh, show some nice buddies. Uh, okay, as long as you stay that side, I'm, I'm very happy. <laughs> uh, what have you been up to this, this week? What has happened? Uh, I know it's winter time. Our winter is not normally the winter that the rest of, of cutting is having. I know people saying snakes are sleeping in the winter. Are they sleeping mm, or are they out to play? No. <laughs> Tell me about it. Yeah, it's uh, mating season for the black mambas now. So uh, most of the interactions are multiple characters involved. So it's been a bit hectic. Uh, just so I was up in Pongola doing a film shoot, or Helen and I were up doing a film shoot on Friday. We went up on Thursday and, and did the film shoot on Friday. Nice and quiet Thursday, beautiful. I said, yes, we hit the right patch, we hit the right patch. And then 11 o'clock on Friday, the phone goes nuts. We have six black mamba calls in the space of 20 minutes. 20 minutes, six calls. That's it. So obviously they were out mating. Yeah, it was just a window of time when everybody got frenetic. I saw all the Durban guys were also crazy. Oh, okay. So we couldn't even get Durban guys to come up and cover us here. But fortunately, most of the snakes were on the boundaries and went back into the bush. Uh, but on return on Saturday, we did two. Okay. So we humans, we have happy hour. Mm -hmm. We've got mating hour. Something like still that. Still happy, huh? Oh, still happy, <laughs> huh? I get you. I no. get you. Neville, tell me about what's in that bag. Uh, and I'm, I'm not a very big snake person. I remember when my daughter had her python. Um, it was a scary experience for me, and I didn't want to go clean near it. What do you, what do you brought for us? Yeah, us? I, I brought a regular visitor to our urban gardens. Yeah, a guy that should be recognized by everybody. And um, I brought two herald snakes along. Herald Yeah. Now, now, if you speak to most people, they'll say red-lipped heralds. Okay. They have red lips when they occur in the frost belt zones. Okay. When they come out of the frost belt zones, no longer have red lips. And now the lip is just a dark olivey color. And uh, again, then the guys revert to, oh, it's a white lip one. Uh. I've caught thousands. I've never seen a white-lipped herald. Never. Never. Doesn't exist. Doesn't exist, yeah. It just doesn't have red lips. Yeah. That's the so difference. To my understanding, when we on the farm, we had a lot of red lips. Uh, yeah. It's not a venomous snake, or is it? Yeah, it's mildly venomous. Yeah. Headache, um, headache mild or, or serious yeah, mild? Yeah, you, you know, more now, when I was at school, and in case the public don't believe me, I did go to school. If you ask any of my schoolmates, they were highly surprised that I've actually survived this long. But um, we used to believe that the venom would give you a headache. Today I know a lot better and, I'm, and I know that stress is responsible for the headache and the venom had absolutely nothing to do with it. So I, I assume it's not venomous because without looking you put your hands in the bag. Yeah, it's, like I said, the venom has got no consequence to humans yeah, whatsoever. Yeah. It's the shock, so you know, it's, it's the that shock. stress that I've been bitten yeah. by a snake, I don't know what it is, and boom, I mean that yeah. stress causes the headache, wow. That's it. So this is uh, a fairly large, not a humongous but a fairly large female and uh, I can tell immediately that it's a female by the tail shape and I just want to go into that today so you can see how the vent is over there and you can see how the tail immediately tapers off yes. all right now the key feature here to ID these guys is this uh, darker head and particularly the side of the face and if you look over the top of the head it's got a darker band just over the back of the neck okay. you see there that's your ID on a herald. Don't look at this color. Yeah. Because the body color can be anything from olive green to almost as dark as the head. But the head's always a little bit darker. Okay. Um, so it's yeah. the head and the tail that, that you can actually use to, to see if well, it's male the or Well, this, this the head won't tell you whether it's male or female. Yeah, the That's a species. Does. But the tail will immediately tell you. That, ta that quick taper off. And I'm just going to take out a male. And we have a look at the male. Here's a male, 
And you can see he's a little bit longer than her, but he's a yeah. lot more slender. Yeah, and now the tail's not that tapered. Now if you look at the tail shape, yeah. you can actually see that it thickens up a bit. Yeah. There's a bent over there somewhere. And you see it thickens up and then it becomes much longer than the females. From the bent or from the bent. From the bent. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so okay. But he's, a, he's, he's a busybody there. All the other features are still in play. This one yeah. still maintained a few of these little white speckles that they generally have mm. or may not have. So not venomous at all. So when public find them somewhere in their garden, don't need to be alarmed? No need for alarm. Uh, protect them from your pets. Yeah. So if you've got cats, just keep them away while he ducks. Yeah, yeah. Cats will and rip them apart. Yeah, cats do. Dogs sometimes chew them up as well. Hmm. But um, why, why, you know, what is their, their purpose, which you say in, in nature, you know, why, why would we rather preserve them and make sure that our cats and dogs don't kill it? Well, nature has got a way of balancing itself out, you see, and it, and it works in cycles. These guys feed primarily on amphibians. Okay. So they eat frogs, toads. Okay. And they help to maintain those balances. Those balances. Well, that's you see, that's, interesting. that's part of it. And one of the reasons why you shouldn't remove this guy, because it's a far better idea to have a herald in your garden eating the frog and the toad than yeah, a cobra. Exactly. Right? So, so that would, would that keep the cobras out? No, it won't keep the cobras out, okay, but it'll but minimize the risk of them yeah, coming in. Okay. Because now it, it's not what keeps snakes out as much as what brings them in. Yeah. If you've got a big frog and toad presence, then everybody will come to the buffet. For sure. For but sure. if you've got one that's picking them off systematically yes. and keeping the numbers not down, not attracting them because there's an overload of them. Then there's less of an attraction for the bigger that's nasties. It. Neville, it was absolutely uh, phenomenal. I'm learning today from snakes, and I'm I'm very afraid of them. What's happening at at the at the reptile park? What can people look forward to? Is there something happening soon? Uh, can people go visit still? Are you open? Yes, we're open. We are certainly open. Uh, we're gearing up for the uh, July holidays, sure. and um, then after July holidays, I think there's a new development happening, uh, which I'm extremely, extremely excited about. Okay. I don't want to say too much about it okay. right now. So, but there's something coming. There's something coming, yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. Thank you very much for being on the show again. If you're a holiday maker and you watch this show and you're coming down to our area in, in the July holiday, and you have kids or not even have kids uh if you want to go out and just you know being blown away by by uh, impressive reptiles uh the reptile park is is your place to go absolutely neville thank you very much for being on the show it was absolutely privileged it's my first time as a presenter and uh hopefully i'll do this soon super Monet, thank you very much thanks a lot stay tuned uh the show is not done yet uh, so stay tuned when we're back, uh, some more interesting people on, on the show.
Welcome back to BTV. This is the Good Morning North Coast Show, and I'm looking forward to this interview. I've got Cameron Coulson. Is that, did I say it? Yes, correct? you did, yeah. Cameron Coulson from, from a local local boy uh, who is doing MMA, and I can see you very staunch sitting there, and uh, we talked about it just before. So when I go out for drinks in the future, you're going to be my Uber driver. I will be there. You know, just have me on standby. And Great stuff. You need. Great stuff. Tell me about Cameron. Who's Cameron? Ah, so um, first of all, I'd like to say thank you so much for having me this morning. Pleasure. And um, yeah, so what can I say about myself? Um, I'm a local boy. I've uh, been doing MMA for the past four years now. I started when I was 17. Okay. Um, and for me, MMA has always been my go-to thing. I've always struggled in school or um, having social anxiety and, and all of that type of thing. And for me, I find martial arts um, really helped me find who I was. And that's specifically through the discipline and training that MMA actually gives to an individual that is willing to put the effort in and uh, see where you can go. Yeah. So MMA for me, personally, it has, uh, it's given me a different outlook on life. Not because of the fighting, but just because of the discipline and the training and the mentality that it takes. Uh, how did you get into MMA? How, was you, how were you introduced to that? So my mother um, started training at uh, KO Fighting Fitness um, in Belito. And uh, she was doing that for the kickboxing fitness and, and all of that. And at the time, I was in boarding school. Uh, so the one weekend, I recall, uh, my mother invited me in for a session. And, you know, you've always seen it on the movies, these yeah. guys doing all these crazy That's things. It. And I'm like, oh, you know, as a kid, especially as, as, a, as a boy and a guy, you know, you're always interested in the fighting and that type of stuff. And now for the first time in my life, I'm actually seeing it. And these guys are teaching me now. Yeah. And right off the block, that's, that just had me wrapped around there. And uh, next thing I knew, a few months down the line, I had my first fight. And that's, that's when it just, I'm like, wow, this is, this is what I want to do. Let's talk about the fighting, you know, uh, your career so far. Um, where are you in your career? My career right now, so I'm still in the amateur division. We have our amateur division and then we have the professional division. So to put this into perspective, um, your amateur is basically just the, you know, learning your arsenary, seeing what works, what doesn't work. It's just a learning process. And you know, if you look back in the days when MMA was just coming up, um, there was no amateur division. Yeah. You would have guys that have maybe one or two, three fights, okay. and they get thrown into the professional ranks. You know, and it's it's quite unreasonable because yeah, you've yeah. got some you've got some big boys out and there. And you can get hurt. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. But nowadays it's so fortunate because we have things like IMAF, okay. which is the International Mixed Martial Arts Federation. Okay. And now what this is, it's basically what I like to do just to help people understand. It's it's basically UFC, but in the amateur division. Yes. Because UFC sponsors these guys, okay. they scout them. Okay. So for me personally, because in the next five years, if I have to drop that, that cliche, what do you, where do you see yourself in the next five years? Yeah. I see myself in an international organization somewhere overseas. Oh and wow. in order to do this, we have to be going through IMAF because it's internationally recognized. Yes. And this is where yes. the right things are. Okay. So, and, and this is the cool thing. We have so much talent in South Africa yeah. from, the, from the fighters, uh, the coaches, we have everything here. Yeah. The only thing that is a problem is just the backing. Yeah. You know, a lot of people aren't that, you know, involved in MMA when it comes to um, funding or backing or any of that type of thing. And we have a lot of guys and talent that just can't get themselves mm. to, you know, to Joburg for the weekend with yeah. the costs and all of that. So we're going to talk about that a little bit later, and mm. I'm going to invite the viewers to get involved with you, mm. you know, to see, you know, if we can get you some, some more backing. Um, Career-wise, I mean, how many fights uh, did you have? Where are you? I mean, oh, you so mentioned a figure in the beginning, which, which impressed me a yes. lot. So my record um, at the moment is uh, nine wins and three losses. Wow. So for me, that's uh, it's, it's quite a good record. It is. It is quite a it good is. record. And it's also just the beginning as well. That's as it. soon as I go professional, that'll get, that'll get scrapped. Yeah, and you start from scratch mm, again. Yes. And then also when it comes to my losses, uh, the only people that have ever beaten me are current or former champions okay. as well. You mentioned something. You are currently the um, MFC welterweight champion. Welterweight champion, which is which is fantastic. Yes. And and, and continental wise. Uh, continental. Um, I'm ranked number two on the okay. continent. Okay. So that's quite an achievement. That, You're that well is, on your that way. That is a very big achievement because there's no age groups. There okay. is nothing as such. As okay. That. No age I'm groups. only 20 years old. Okay. So you know I'm going up against. Um, I think my first two opponents were 26 years old. Ah, okay. You know, so yeah, a little bit more experience. And they've got that experience. You know, they, yeah. these guys have been doing it so much longer than you. Yeah. So you really do have to, you know, put in that extra work to be That's able it. to, you know, combat these guys. That's it. So, if people want to get involved with you, you know, from from sponsoring you or, or help you fund you to go all the way, how do they go about, and what will they get out of it? 
See, well, the thing is, the, it's for me, the, the biggest thing is whenever I sit down with a with um, potential sponsor, it's never just, it can't be a one-way thing. No. It has to, be, has to be going like this. That's it. You know, we need to have a conversation. What do you want from me? And most yeah. importantly, what can I do for you? Yeah. And this is where the cool thing is, this is where I can be a, a brand for you. Brand ambassador. I, brand ambassador, that type of thing. When I go and fight, so exactly, when I go defend my, bar, my mm -hmm. belt mm -hmm. at uh, MFC, and I have my fight kits on, you yourself and your company can put your logos all over my, all over my fight gear, my that's shirts, it. if you want to get hats made, bottles, and social media is going to be going galore. So that's the type exactly. of things we can talk about. So or even fundraisers around that's it. for, for the, uh, that's you know, it. it's a community. And I'm a Belito guy. I'm yeah. a local. I want to get involved with things. That's it. So, yeah. If you're watching now and you're going to see this maybe not even on the full show because we're going to share it, Cameron's going to share it, and you want to get involved, um, being in the film industry for, for a big portion of my life, you know, I know what the exposure is valued at. And, and, and I want to invite you guys that, you know, listening to him, and, and it's a sport that's growing, Cameron. I mean, it's, it's all over um, TV, Facebook, and YouTube. And uh, YouTube eventually, I mean, I've, I've seen people spending days and, and weeks just watching these fights. Um, so the exposure that you will gain by backing Cameron is just phenomenal. And I want to invite you guys, where do people get hold of you? Social media, obviously, uh, Hayley is going to put it on screen, but where can people follow you and, and you know, see your your progress well absolutely um so i would say my instagram my facebook any of my social medias uh that's why i keep things updated mm. that's where i will be advertising things or letting people know what's going on and of course with that there uh, you can always contact me um all information is in my bio um, as well as um email addresses yeah. for further information such as or questions on sponsorship or or anything to get involved with yeah um, what's next for you what's next for cameron fights coming up um, so on the 21st of July to the 24th of July, we have another national tournament coming okay. up, um, so which is very, very exciting. Where is that going to be? This is going to be held in Johannesburg. Okay, cool. Yes. So what, what happens here um, from each province around the country, we will get uh, between two and three, usually the third man or woman is the reserve, but there will always be two fighters in a division. Okay. And those two best from each province will go to Joburg to compete to see who the best is. Well, Cameron, we wish you all the luck. We, I'm definitely going to track you and, and follow you and, and look at your progress and supporting you. Mm. Uh, local boy, we, we're both local boys. And uh, thank you very much. I'm going to contact you when I go out again. Let's 100%. go have a couple hey, of That offer's dops. there for real. Lovely. I'm enjoying it. Thank you very much. Well, it was, a, it was such a privilege meeting Cameron on the show. And if you want to support him, go follow him uh, and, and, and get in contact with him. The exposure that Cameron will give you is phenomenal. Cameron, thank you very much for being on the show. It was such a privilege meeting you. Thank you so much for having me. And cheers. Thank it's you. It's just a that. pleasure. Well, stay tuned. Uh, we've got an exciting show this morning. After the ad, we will be back. Fit24 and Belito TV are proud to announce a new and exciting television series. Giving contestants the opportunity to lose weight and feel great with our Fit24 challenge. We are looking for 12 contestants who are driven to achieve their weight loss goals and kickstart their new and improved healthy lifestyle within the guidance of their very own personal trainer provided by Fit24. The finale will reveal the winner who made the biggest impact on their health and weight loss journey walking away with a host of prizes valued at 50,000 Rand, along with a lifetime membership at Fit24 Gyms. To enter the Fit24 Challenge, write a one-page motivation as to why we should choose you. Submit your motivation and a full-length photo of yourself at the closest Fit24 Gyms Club in your area, and you could be chosen for our very first season. Entries close on the 25th of June, 2022. T's and C's apply. Please note that the Fit24 Challenge is only permitted to entrants who reside within KZN. Welcome back to BTV. We've got a fun day on the set this morning or on the program this morning and with me on the couch is sandy from earth pet dark training academy that's a mouthful it's a big <laughs> name um sandy tell me what you do we've had a quick discussion before we, we we went on air so you've got you're doing something very interesting tell us who you are 
Okay, so I have the luckiest job on the planet. I get to play with puppies and dogs all day. Um, it's loads of fun. Um, I basically I do private lessons for obedience, brain stimulation, which is your trick training. Um, I'm also a qualified behaviorist, so I do behavior consults, and I run a puppy school, um, which is sponsored by Hills. Now, sitting here and looking at Hills now, I know Hills is a very big brand, powerful brand, and for somebody like that to sponsor you, you need to do something right. Absolutely. So they also do training for, for the puppy schools that they do sponsor. So I've had, um, besides my other training that I've done, obviously my instructor's courses and my behavior courses, puppies, uh, Hills also um, offer in their instructors puppy training to work with puppies, uh, which is great. They also sponsor us with updated equipment all the time. So um, seesaws and tunnels and really fun stuff um, for puppies. Uh, they also spoil completely spoil our puppy owners. Um, they have a gift bag that they give to all their puppies to the value of about 800 rand. Um, it comes with a sample bag of food. They have nice little toys. They also um, sponsor us with treat bags for our puppy owners and um, little ribbons when you've done your puppy class. They give you recipe books and loads of information. They're really a really strong brand and they do a lot for us. Sandy, I'm very intrigued. Let's go back to, you started this by saying you play with puppies all the time. And, and I think it's not just playing with them, you train them. We grew up with, with little dogs and we love little dogs, but I, we've never, I've never had my dog trained. Elaborate a little bit on that. If you train them, what do you do? So if we're talking puppies, um, you know, puppies are babies, they're young. So we start off with the basic manners, basic obedience. You know, you'll sit, you're down, you'll stay. Basically, it teaches them to start to listen. And that's really what you want. You want to have a, a household where the dogs and the people and everyone gets on, it's harmonious. You know, it's not dogs diving all over the place. Um, and you're building a really strong bond uh, with your puppy. Um, or, d or adult dog. I mean, you can train dogs up to any age. Um, but basically, you want, to, want your dog to have manners, to be really integrated in your family and not always yapping at the door, jumping on guests. So we start, the younger the better, um, obviously, but you can train any age. Um, but we're just getting them to be part of your family in a very acceptable way. That's it. That's it. I've I know in the past I've heard of dogs, we call them dogs out of hell or cats out of hell. And you know, they, they, they become so naughty that they start eating, eating your furniture and eventually the, 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 the owners just give them away or take them to the SPCA. And that's sad because what will happen to their pet at the end of the day? So that is what you specialize in is training them and Absolutely. getting them to, to behave. Absolutely. That's our biggest thing. You know, too many dogs get returned because it's bad behavior. Um, unfortunately, it it's so often could have been sorted and fixed if somebody had put in the time and effort to do yeah. some training. So for the viewers out there, if you've got a puppy, recently puppy, and you want the puppy to be trained and you don't have the knowledge, it looks like Sandy's the, your, your go-to person. You can give me a call. Even, <laughs> if, you, even if, you, if it's older than, like you said, you know, it, it, it doesn't need to be a puppy. It can be older. You, you're, Absolutely. You're so I do. The puppy classes are only up to 20 weeks old. Um, you know, you can't have adult dogs and puppies all mixing together, you, it, it doesn't work. So, um, for any dog older than 20 weeks, I do private lessons. I come to your own house because I can then see the behavior in the dog's comfortable space and I'll work with it yeah. from there. So, can, can I just confirm that? You said you do private lessons. So, do you do group lessons and private lessons or just private lessons? So, for the older dogs, I just do private lessons, okay. but for puppies, I do either or. Okay. So, you and can come to class or I'll do private lessons. And you mentioned you go to the client's home. I do. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. So it's better to be able to see the dog in its own environment yeah. because it's, you know, you take a dog out of its environment, it doesn't behave the same as it does at home. So, yeah. it's really hard to gauge what the issues are if the puppy's not in its own environment, in its own environment. or the dog. That's it. 
Sandy, it was such a privilege talking to you. It's so interesting. And, and, and if people want to get hold of you, where, they, where do they go? Where do So obviously they can phone me or I have a Facebook page called Earth Pets Products. Earth that they Pets can Products. Yeah. Fantastic. You know, with the numbers on the screen as we speak, uh, get hold of Sandy. I think um, instead of getting to a point where you, you, you stop loving your pet and hating them and giving them away, Give Sandy a call. She will sort them out for you. <laughs> have you ever had a dog? And we're going to close with this. I'm very in interested. Okay. Are you, have you ever had a pet that you couldn't train? Um, no. There's no dog you can't train. There are dogs that might take a little longer, possibly, um, depending on what challenges they face. But there are no dogs that are untrainable. Fantastic. You've heard it. Uh, there is no dog or pet that's untrainable. And Sandy's got the expertise. Back by hills. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sandy. Thanks for coming. It was such a lovely conversation and interesting. And I think for our, for our viewers, uh, there's definitely viewers that's going to call you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks for having lot. me on your show. Stay tuned. We're not done yet. Uh, some great people coming on the show. Uh, two of my favorite boys, Diego and um, Brett from Mozambique. We're going to be talking about um, the man versus food happening soon. Uh, well, tonight, it's happening tonight um, at Mozambique, so don't miss it. Uh, also talk about the uh, King of the Shore break, the yearly event, so stay tuned. We'll see you soon.
Welcome back to BTV. And on the couch, I've got the very pretty, gorgeous Miss Melito finalist. Um, her name is Nukulunga Zakile. Did I say it right? Zikale. Zikale. Thank you very much. Tell us about yourself. Um, who who is the Miss Belito finalist when she's uh, on a day-to-day -day life? Uh, it's Nuglunga Zikali coming from Stenga uh, at the rural area called Dorengob. I'm 23 years old and uh, I'm taking a gap year this year because of uh, financial issues and I'm looking after my sister's child. Ah, uh, okay. Why did you enter Miss Belito? Uh, I entered Miss Belito because I want to show a young woman coming from a background that is, is not for a, a rich people only. Even us as poor people, we can enter Miss Belito and make it. And I enter Miss Belito because I want to, uh, to become exposed to, to other people. Okay. Yeah. So I know from previous experiences being involved with Miss, Miss Belito with in, in last year that you guys have a charity of choice or do you need to you know bring a charity to the table. What is your charity? What do you want to change? Uh, I want to charity my, my school, Shagambula High School, okay. and also the, the street vendors because yes. my mom is a street vendor and it's my sponsor too. Oh, can she's you your imagine? Sponsor as well. Yes, That's she special. took all their savings to sponsor me, so I think I'm proud about her. Well, I'm sitting here and I'm proud being a street vendor, and she's your sponsor. That's very, very proud. That's a mom thousands, huh? <laughs> so we're going into I know the cocktail events coming up, and then the final, and you guys are doing a lot of events, photo shoots. If you win Miss Belito. What, how would that change your life and what would you like to achieve after that? I want to change my background because I grew up uh, poor and struggling. So I want to show them that we can make it and I want to make them proud, proud about me. So you want to inspire people and I think that is, that is absolutely amazing. Um, and we need people like yourself. We need people that stand up and say, listen, I want to change. I want to be an example for other people. And I, and I just want to congratulate you on, on becoming a finalist. You're all very pretty. You're all gorgeous. So I think, um, yeah, thank you very much for, for entering. Uh, do you guys, do you still need sponsors? I know that you can have more than one sponsor. Yes, I need sponsors because I, I have only two sponsors. And yeah, I need sponsors. Let me just let me just tell you, the viewers, if you're watching this program, that um, what the sponsors is all about. So one of these challenges that the the Miss Belito finalist has is to find sponsors, and that money goes to the Zimbabwe Rotary Club, club and um, that then gets used for charities. You know, it, it's not money that they 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 raise from sponsors and use for themselves. So if you're watching this program um, about Nokulunga and you want to sponsor her, um, you know, get in touch with Miss Belito, Corin or Heidi or even herself um, and then, you know, sponsor her because that money uh, goes towards charity. Um, Nokulunga, you want to say something else? If there is someone who wants to sponsor me, he will email me on zikalnoglunga 16gmail.com That's it. You've got it. You've heard it. It's going to be on the screen. Uh, Hayley, our editor, would, it, would put it on the screen so you can get in contact with her um, and, and maybe speak to her and sponsor her. There's so much. We need people to change. If we want to change the world, we need to start with ourselves. Isn't that correct? And you have standed up and said, I want to change. And that's what you've entered. I want to change my background. You want to change your background. That is fantastic. A lot of people will just sit back and say, this is how I've been raised. This is my problem. And I've accepted it. But you have not accepted it. So congratulations. Thank you for being on the couch with me today. And we wish you all the luck. I mean, you guys can find her on, on your social media. 
yeah, on Facebook, Facebook. Uh, Ziningi Sikali. Okay, so people can look you up, go like you on Facebook, follow you and support you. Thank you very much for being on the couch today. It was great, great speaking to you. And all the best for, for the journey ahead. Thank you very much. We're going into a quick ad break. And when we come back, there's going to be amazing guests on the couch with me. See you soon. Welcome back to BTV, and I'm excited. I've got two of my favorite people on the couch. It's my first time you've been on the couch, so let's, let's do this. Yes, uh, I've sir. always wondered what would happen if us three would be on the couch. We're not going to swear today. Do you? No, I'm a, on my best behavior. Best behavior. Okay. Best behavior. Okay. So tonight is man versus food. Yes, sir. And, and we know that you guys are all charity. Um, I mean, you guys, I just love you guys and I love working with you guys. I'm always the sound oak at the back there doing a bit of dopping um, and making music, bringing the party and I, I, everything that you guys do, I always want to be involved. So man versus food, what is it all about? I think Brett will uh, introduce you to the charities. It's a usual suspect and uh, something Brett's very passionate about and myself. So basically it's, a, it's a, obviously a man versus food competition. We're going to be eating it, drinking it trying to chew on it, Demolishing uh, it. the whole lot. So we've got, we've got a couple of events, which is speed wing eating competition. So it's speed hot wings. This How hot? Uh, all of it. All yeah. of it. So all of it. It's proper. So, so yeah, basically what we've got, we've got Jono from, from um, Flavorland, Flavorland yeah. that's, that's developed a Carolina Reaper sauce oh for goodness. the wings. So the intensity of a chili is measured on a scale called the Scoville scale and in Scoville units. Okay. And a habanero chili is around about the 100,000 mark. And uh, these Carolina Reapers are 1.5 million Scoville units. So, so they'll come for I you. I just want to confirm, there's going to be medics on stage. Yes, yeah. RPSS. Okay. Well, no, is it Medi Response? Medi Response. Medi Response. Yeah. Medi response. I think that's important. Yeah. yeah, all of them, they're all there. Um, safety first, always in all our events, you know. Um, and not only are the chili wings there, there's also a chili vodka drinking contest. Um, we do shots of vodka that have been infused with chili over a period of time. That's. Uh, it's also real. It's, yeah, that's uh, it gets the, real fast. That's with the Sakana chili, which is the old, the old bird's eye chili. So, Rick, yeah. tell me, tell me more about Thor's hammer. That's, yes. Is that is that the first year? First year introduced. We're doing it? Thor's hammer. So over the years, we've done big burgers, we've done big steaks, um, and I wanted to do something different. And I saw it, I saw it online somewhere. So we're doing a whole beef shin that's going to be slow roasted over ten hours. Um, we'll basically go onto a plate, 
with mashed potato. And how we do it every year is we put the plate on with the mashed potato and the Thor's hammer, and we take it up to three kilos with sauce. You have to clear your plate. Jeez. And is it, that's going to be, you have to clear it in the fastest time? In the fastest time. So that's, that's going to be a messy affair. Yeah, oaks don't use, if the oaks know what they're doing, they don't use cutlery. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> get in like a dog. Yeah, it's yeah, a, a, a true get story. Stuck in and they, 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 you actually gulp it down, so you're not chewing. You basically. Yeah. It's horrific. Oh, it's horrific to watch. Yeah, it really is. Like system. I think yeah. the next day it's a bit of a no getting doubt, that yeah. stuff out. Especially, I mean, especially on the chili wings stuff. You don't wipe, yeah, you dab. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yo. Put it in the. Luckily, fridge. I'm doing the sound, bringing the party, uh, and just watching that. <laughs> So it is tonight, um, it is full, so if you're watching this and you haven't booked, I'm sorry. Unfortunately, next year. Unfortunately, we are full already, there was okay. a lot of hype. We've missed two years of this due to obviously all the drama that has unfolded over the past two years. So we are super, super, super excited. I think the great, this one. The great news is that BTV will be there, we'll be filming. Um, it's going to be on the big screen, so you might go sit at... on. Somewhere oh. and still see little bits of it, but you can't, the, the venue is full. And we'll try our best to make a plan for yeah, you yeah. if you do arrive on the night, but, but in terms of bookings, yeah. we are fully if, loaded. If you're not going to miss it, we are going to film some, some footage and put something together and play it and put it on social media. Before I go on to the King of the Shore break, I saw a very disturbing photo of you in a bikini with <laughs> <or> some <laughs> Peter. What it was that all about? Is, this to, is that to chase some people away after it's been full or what was the story? So, so for us, you know, we don't take ourselves too seriously. Um, you know, life's too short and we are out here trying to achieve for a great cause and through just being ourselves and being naturally who we are, we decided to be cheeky and just do something off so the wall and ridiculous. You guys being the terrible twins, are we, is there... There's going to be a calendar coming, but okay, for now... With you as well, is there a follow-up on All these? the boys, there's going to be 12 of them there, uh, January to December, the calendar boys. So, so stand by for the speedo shoot. Before I move on, I want to move on to King of the Shore break. The, you're doing Man vs. Food for a charity. What is the charity all about? Yeah, so we're doing Sables Creatures, our, our okay. usual uh, charity, yes. and also with the Belito Beach Collective. Okay. So we, we've chosen over the years to, to stick to our charities, yes. and these are the ones that we'll, co we'll continuously Fantastic. support. We're very much involved in both charities, so, and we, we know that the money gets spent properly. That's you know, and that's the main thing for that's us. It. Yeah. King yeah, of the Shore break. Happening soon. I mean, yes, I was, I was, it, last year was my first year doing a bit of music for you guys. I loved it. Can't wait for this year. It's happening in June, this month. Tell us about it. So King of the Shore Break, also one of the firm favorites of our charities that we do, of our events that we do for charity. And uh, a super well-supported event. You know, Brett and I made this up a few years ago. Um, after quite a few beers and a late night to watch YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> the way I, I've had a couple of beers with you on Wednesday exactly. nights and then the stuff that comes out of yeah. it is phenomenal. Look, That's how big things happen. We huh? left our rookie years behind us. We're yeah. in the big leagues now, you know. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so we really know how to do it. But yeah. I mean, again, just it's all about community, getting down onto the beach, getting in the surf, you know, making friends, the gears, the vibe, food, merchandise. Girls in bikinis. This year, girls in bikinis. And the kids and love this it. this year, so. we are doing a mankini contest. Oh. So it's going to be the king I remember last year, I think, and, and I was <coughs> stoked last year, um, it was on Salt Rock Beach. It's going to be on Salt Rock again. Yeah. Okay, so last year, you guys moved it a couple of days before because of where, bad weather. And I, I thought, you know, it's ludicrous to move something like that so soon. Um, you know, is people going to come? And it was packed. It was absolutely packed. Um, so again on Salt Rock this year, when is it happening? So we're looking at the 26th of June, so it'll be a Sunday. The reason why we do Sunday, obviously, yeah. our big, our big uh, set of, of, of people that come through are the kids, and obviously they've got school sports on a Saturday and so on like that. So we do it on Sunday. Um, and yeah, so that's the, it'll start, we'll, we'll kick off at about 9 o'clock with registrations and try to get the surfing going by yeah. about 10. Well, I can just tell you guys, if, if, if you're not into surfing or that kind of stuff, if there's one reason you must come is for Mr. D's commentary. <laughs> that is one of the highlights of the day. The stuff that comes out of his mouth is, yeah. Angelic. Angelic. <laughs> yes, angelic. 
Yeah. Guys, thank you very much. Um, I just want to say, I mean, King of the Shore Break is, is, is an open event. There's no limit to it. We're out in public space. The beach is quite big. The sound's going to be traveling much further this year. So come enjoy it. Come enjoy the, the yeah. festivals. Like you said, food. I mean, there's kids' events. Uh, there's different categories. There's, there's merch available. Yeah. It's going to be a fantastic, fantastic event. And I'm so proud to be associated with you guys. So yeah. And I mean, it's not really such a strict contest that people have said, hey, I'm not into surfing. You are body surfing the shore break waves and getting your butt handed to you on That's the it. beach That's for it. everyone's enjoyment. Exactly. You know, so like we said, we don't take ourselves too seriously and neither is the contest should it be taken too seriously. You know? exactly. It's just a good day out, friends, family, fun. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you very much, cool. guys. Thanks See you tonight. Much. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm Thanks looking for forward to uh, doing the man versus food to you guys tonight. And uh, just thank you very much. That's the show uh, for today, and uh, it was absolutely amazing. We're going into ad break. See you soon. Hey, Belito, it's 2022 Man vs. Food. We're supporting the usual suspects, Sables Creatures and the Belito Beach Collective. This year we've got a long list of activities for this amazing evening. What do we got, Brett? We've got hot wings, we've got chili vodka drinking contest, we've got a boat race, we've got an auction, but this year we are changing the game. We have completely destroyed the main event and we've created something new and it is called Thor's Hammer. So Brett, tell us what Thor's Hammer is all about. This is a 2 kg beef shin. We're going to cover it with a cheese sauce on top of a bed of mash, weighing in at 3 kg. 3 kilos. So if you think you're man enough, you got what it takes, or just capable of taking this bad boy down, get down to Mozambique Belito on the 8th of June. Get involved. It's all for charity. And let's see you put your money where your mouth is. And we will, we we will, will rock you. <laughs> We've touched on the bigger issues. So there are other uh, products available for less um, risky, less um, intense um, applications such as shower, showers. You know, you do get cementitious uh, products as mm -hmm. well that work with or without a membrane. Um, we do prefer in this area, and, and we do live in this area, and this is Belito TV, that um, uh, you know, mostly petroleum-based products are used because of the stretch, um, and they're used with a membrane of some, of some sort because um, like, I, like I mentioned, we, we've got high fluctuating temperatures mm. um, in the area. We've got a high humidity, which with those temperatures causes massive expansion and contraction between the various materials that our buildings are made yes. out of. So they don't all expand and contract at the same rate. And that causes movement and, right. and, and differential settlement and a whole variety of issues that you want something um, that's got enough thickness, enough stretch yes. um, you know to enough properly. tolerance yeah. yes and not only for five years for 25 years you know everything has a life so it's not going to mm -hmm. last forever um, and most of these products are maintenance free you know they go under a set of tiles and away you go but yeah there's a, just a, a quick brief introduction to waterproof no that's amazing and you've spoken about the lifespan so many people might have done waterproofing in their homes um, years ago. How regularly should things like this be checked? Or when purchasing a new house um, or, or building a house, I think the knowledge of how often this has to be redone or um, checked is, is also important. Yeah, look, I think if you're buying a house, let's go on that because that happens a lot in town. Mm. Um, any, damp, any damp or waterproofing needs to be looked at because immediately you're going to be in for some extent of repairs and, and like we've explained if you're going to fix something you you go back in the process and you undo everything until you get to where the point of failure was or where the omission in the detail was and then you redo it so that is going to incur cost to get back to that point incur cost to fix it and incur cost to reinstate everything so any damp when buying a house 
should be looked at. Um, uh, you know, we do inspections for homeowners. We, we offer home inspections and then offer a quote for the repair. And then if the quote's accepted, we take off the home inspection um, cost, you know, so that it doesn't end up costing them. But we right. end up getting business and it works. So, you know, that option we've made available to a lot of estate agents in town, and a lot of them do use it, and, and they find value for them and their clients. Excellent, yeah. sure. Well, there you have it, people. I'm sure you've been educated as much as I've been um, with relating to damp proofing and waterproofing. Thanks so much, Jason. I hope you've all been as educated as I've been today, chatting to Jason about damp proofing and waterproofing. Thank you so much, Jason. And we look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Under Construction with Chapman Building. Till then. Thank you so much for all our guests, our viewers and our sponsors for making GMNC possible. We hope that you enjoy the show and we will close off our show as usual with a music video. Enjoy your week and we catch you right here, same place, same time, Friday morning. Crowds were strangers, I can't relate. Cities burning, so much hate. A world gone crazy. I felt alone, like the last one Then through the fallout, choking on the ash cloud Suddenly you called out, take my hand And from the dust you showed me I could trust you Now I know it's just you and I till the end Like we were the last two 
Survivors in a scorched world Don't know how I found you But you know I'll fight for you, girl Like we were the last two Survivors in a scorched world Don't know how I found you But you know I'll fight for you, girl For shelter, a safer place By night we'd listen Locked in embrace Just remembering Went through the fallout Choking on the ash cloud Suddenly you called out Take my hand And from the dust you Showed me I could trust you Now I know it's just you And I till the end Like we were the Survivors in a scorched world Don't know how I found you But you know I'll fight for you, girl Like we were the last two Survivors in a scorched world Don't know how I found you But you know I'll fight for you, girl From the dust you showed me I could trust you Now I know it's just you and I till the end Like we were the 